Just in the last uh, week, one of our researchers in Thailand uncovered a contract between uh, the Thai government and the Japanese army for a and the Yanfu station, and it was a, a licensed place. It was <coughs> medical checks, that sort of thing. And some of our research is taking place in other languages, so you can imagine this adds to the difficulty. Some of, some of our research is being done, for instance, in Thai language, and it adds to the complexity of what we're doing. But I find Thailand, as an example, to be very interesting, because when you go to Glendale and you look at the statue there, Thailand is one of the names on the plaque. And so I said, let's find out if Thailand actually has a problem with Japan. So I called up one of the ex-prime ministers, someone that I know, Prime Minister Abhisit, and I asked to meet with him and his deputy of the Democratic Party, who's kind of like the LDP here. And I asked, does Thailand have a problem with Japan on reparations or apologies or any of these sorts of things? And the answer was no, and they were even surprised that I even brought it up. This is a complete non-issue in Thailand. Yet Thailand's name is on the statue, on the plaque. In fact, I found that only four countries have a problem with Japan. You already know what those countries are. North and South Korea, China, and Japan. And this isn't just organic to Japan. This is the same in every country I go to. The biggest problems in the United States are caused by Americans. And so, this is not a surprise that it's also true of Japan. Okay, so common sense is enough to, to show many people that this is, especially if they've been in the military, uh, or in business, all business people know that they always want, you know, generally they want more troops, businesses want more money, right? So they're not going to waste it on things. Now it comes down to the actual archives, and that's what we're here for tonight. I've gone through all that to set the context of the IWG report. And also I, I want to make one more context about what this is about on the geopolitical level. Maybe everybody here already knows but clearly, there are many levels of this fight. One level is just racism. People who don't like Japan blame it on Japan. Another level is money. Uh, for instance, the attorney, who was Japanese, who went around to Philippines and Indonesia and Malaysia trying to work up a lawsuit. Another level is local <laughs> politics, and this actually becomes very big later. Local politics has many faces here. One is, we see uh, President Park over in uh, Korea. She's not really all there, I think. And she obviously uses it for political reasons. A few others, like Mike Honda over in the United States, uses it for his own political reasons. His voting base contains many Koreans and many uh, Chinese, but not many Japanese, so you can see where that's going. So there's these various layers, and then once we get to the highest layer, that is China. China's fingerprints are all over this. Everywhere we look, including in the IWG, China is in there. And, and I mean as an active participant in the process of the IWG. Korea is like the glove, and China is the hand in this. So you see these uh, Korean men in, uh, in Glendale and other places. Uh, down in Australia, we've learned there's a similar problem. China is running a massive information operation, of which the comfort women issue is just a small part. Another part is, of course, Nanjing. Not to go into that, but you can see a similar storyline emerge. It's about Senkaku Islands, it's about Nanjing, it's about China emerging. And they need to keep Japan weak. A key to keeping Japan weak is to split relations with the United States and other allies such as Australia and cause frictions with Korea, which is very easy to do. It's not easy to split relations with the United States, but uh, somehow through their diligence they're managing to, to cause some problems as everybody here knows. And in that regard, regard, I would like to mention Resolution 121, which everyone here probably knows about very well. That resolution is meaningless in the United States. You know, we, we pass resolutions almost every day, and some of those include things like National Pie Day, 
3.14, like pi in the circle. I'm serious. Another one was uh, National Craft Beer Day, which is like homemade beer. Saving the best for last. Uh, one that was proposed but thankfully didn't pass was Michael Jackson Day. Look it up on the internet. And actually, if you look up ridiculous house resolutions, there is an unbelievable number of things that... Well, it will leave foreigners laughing, it leaves me almost crying. <laughs> if you look behind House Resolution 121, you'll see a similar group of people. Uh, that are in, uh, the Chinese Global Alliance is there in the background again, and of course, my Honda is in the forefront. So this meaningless 121, which is very famous in Japan, is uh, it can be used in news stories over and over and over, and it looks like the United States has decided to uh, turn the entire government against Japan. But what really is happening is local politics. We see Mike Honda and some others using this, and they pass that on the House, and, and now it's a great news article story. So you can see this beautiful information operation. I would love to go to the school in Beijing and learn how they do this. They managed to cover up the great leap forward and the cultural revolution and invade Tibet and do so many other things, and yet the world focuses on comfort women. And so let's get down to, to real evidence.